GPT-5 just launched today and the hype around this has been absolutely unprecedented. Even last night before the model was released, people were talking about how today would go down in history as a pivotal moment in AI models. And the benchmarks that were released today are super impressive across the board from reasoning to coding capabilities. But the question is, how good is it at coding? Is it much better than GPT-4.0? We're gonna find out right now by running this thing through two coding challenges. So let's get into it. Before we get into the testing, let's take a quick look at these insane benchmarks benchmarks that came out today for GPT-5. This is the math benchmark. You can see GPT-5 Pro and regular GPT-5 are awesome at these benchmarks. They're achieving near perfect scores. On PhD level science questions, you can see GPT-5 is also very good and a slight improvement over O3. And then of course, what everybody wants to know, the coding benchmarks, you can see GPT-5 achieves a score of 74.9% with thinking enabled on SWE Bench Verified. Now, what does that mean? To put that into context, here is Claude Opus 4.1 scorecard for that same benchmark, and they have 74.5. So you can see GPT-5 just slightly outperforms 4.1 very marginally on this benchmark. So it technically is the most powerful and best coding model right now, at least according to Sweebench. But the best part is the pricing. Now, if you're going to use Claude Opus 4.1 or Claude Sonnet, you can see Opus is extremely expensive. It's $15 per million tokens input, $75 per million tokens output. Look at the pricing for GPT-5. It is $1.25 for million tokens input and $10 for million tokens output. That is absolutely insane for this level of performance and is so much cheaper than Claude Opus 4.1. I don't know how they've done this, but this is really awesome. Okay, for our first coding task, we're actually gonna use Cursor because if you haven't seen, Cursor just added GPT-5 today. So if you go into Cursor and check your models, you can see you can add GPT-5 and it says it's offered with free credits to paying users during launch week, which is cool. So if you have a Cursor subscription, definitely give GPT-5 a try. All right, so we're gonna enable GPT-5. And then for this one, we're going to pop in this prompt here to build a smart recipe app. So it's gonna take a list of available ingredients and it's going to uh, show cooking time, difficulty level, etc. and and you can like input dietary restrictions and stuff like that. So let's see what it comes back with. This is super cool. You can see the plan in action. It's creating like quite a detailed plan and reasoning in the background about what to do. So it's not jumping right into the coding yet. It's doing a lot of preliminary planning, which is hopefully gonna give us a better result. So this is really cool. It seems super agentic. I'm sure this also partially relates to how, you know, Cursor's agent harness is using GPT-5 and not solely just related to GPT-5's new capabilities, but it's it's telling us it's gonna create all the code, then check for issues and provide run instructions. So it's doing a lot of things in the back end for us. It hasn't created any code yet. It's still planning, but uh, let, let's see what it does. Okay, I stopped the video to let it cook, but it only took about a minute and a half more and it's come up with a game plan here to act Activate this so it has a streamlit app which is built on Python so you have to create a virtual environment it gives you the code to do that or the command to do that then you install the requirements which is going to do right now and then to run it you just do streamlit run app.py so when the requirements finished installing we'll go ahead and do that okay and then let's see what the app looks like all right so it pulls it up in localhost here Okay, wow. This actually looks really good for a one shot. I mean, it's, it's very basic, but okay. So you can put in a gluten-free, I mean, you can add a bunch of dietary restrictions here. Nut-free, max results five, choose an option. Okay, let's see. Pizza dough, broccoli, bell pepper, and sweet potato. Suggest recipes. Okay, so it doesn't have any recipes stored in the database yet, but this is just a front end that you can build a back end database to and sort of match these criteria to, but this looks pretty good for like a 90 second one shot prompt. This is impressive in that it didn't take very long to do. Um, with a more detailed prompt and a more detailed set of requirements to build a back end out, you can see how GPT-5 with the cursor agent can actually be pretty beneficial and helpful to your coding workflow. So this is good, I, I, I'm impressed by this test. Okay, so just for fun, I went back and I asked Cursor and GPT-5 to please add some recipes or sample recipe data in the back end. And it took like 30 or 40 seconds for it to do that. So let's just see what it did. So let's run Streamlit Run. Okay, so let's launch it again and see what happens. Let's pick a random ingredient like mozzarella and let's suggest recipes. Okay, so we got grilled cheese, margarita pizza, and it's got, okay, it's even got steps in here. All right, super simple, but 
again, like with just a few simple prompts and reiterating for maybe just two or three minutes, it's come up with this, which is impressive and, and more impressive than some of the coding tutorials I've done for model releases on this channel if you've been following along. So very well done, GPT-5 and Cursor. Okay, for our last coding tutorial, we're actually gonna be using Cursor CLI Agent, which just got released today. This is so cool. If you know anything about Claude Code, you know how powerful their terminal agent is. Well, Cursor just released their competitor today called Cursor CLI. I've been playing around with this a little bit today and it is really awesome. So you just copy this command to install it in your terminal. I've already done this. I'm not gonna go over how to set it up, but we're gonna be using the CLI to test out this coding challenge. For this, you just fire up the cursor agent by typing cursor hyphen agent, and you can see that it defaults to the GPT-5 model for the command. So for this, we're going to be using a prompt to create a focus timer. And this timer is going to have kind of a Pomodoro sequence with work and rest cycles, but it's also gonna have some data that is stored locally in the browser uh, to track your tasks as well as your weekly productivity statistics. So let's see how this handles the coding task with GPT-5 and cursor together. But this time we're on the command line. Let's see if this is even better. Okay, the CLI agent from Cursor is brand new, and of course with GPT-5 getting high to band today, this seems to be taking a little bit of time, so let's check back in in just a second. Okay, so it only took about two more minutes after I turned the camera off, and it created a very simple browser-based, so HTML-based app for the Pomodoro timer, and you just have to open it up in a browser, and for the audio notifications, it says to use this uh, server with Python, so I've opened another terminal and done that to serve it on port 8000. So let's open up the HTML file. Okay, and this okay, this actually looks pretty good. Minimalist UI, but I like it. Let's start it. Okay, all right, so the timer works. And let's see if we do sound. Okay, so it came up with some sounds here for the actually interesting. Okay, all right, so it's got some productivity sounds. I mean, it's got like, it's got a task list here. So buy groceries and you can check them off and I put in some sample statistics in here to show productivity streaks and achievement so this is actually pretty good a great one-shot app again a well done experiment by by GPT-5 and the cursor agent look we have only scratched the surface of what GPT-5 can do from a coding perspective today this is just the first look or the first take I'll be playing around with this a little bit more GPT-5 is also available in the API today so you can connect it to other IDEs and coding agents using your API key I had a video tutorial previously about how to use the Kimi API key or other open source models within Claude code and you can use OpenAI's API key and GPT-5 in Claude code as well by using something like this, where you add this to your bash HRC file or your ZSHRC file. See my prior video on how to do that, but this is the kind of script you need to run if you want to do this with Claude code and GPT-5 together. I might play around with this in the coming weeks, and if you try it, let me know what you think. All right, so now that we've seen GPT-5 in action, what's the verdict? Look, it's clearly better at coding than GPT-4.0, but I still think that Claude 4.1 Opus plus Claude code is a very strong contender, even against using GPT-5 with the new Cursor CLI agent like we just did today. I plan to keep testing this and I want to hear from you guys what you think about GPT-5's coding capabilities. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.